cut the logs one summer, and the next summer we put the walls up. Yeah, we lived there 38 years, and then our daughter moved in, and uh, actually our granddaughter was born on the floor of the cabin. Uh, all these oaks are now 100 years old, because it was 1911 when the land was clear-cut for the brickyards. However, in 1950, they were only 38 years old, or 39. So they were just the right size for a cabin. All, but now they're all 100 years old. I have a nail here and a whole lot of plastic bags hanging. Okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> so what, what was the story? How, how did that start? Well, I just got the idea that people hiking up in the mountain might like to pick up the trash they see. No. Wow. But I didn't yeah. keep it up. I went to school in the country because my parents were split and they found some schools that would take me. Hmm. I got a scholarship to a little progressive school, that's what they called them in those days, of John Dewey progressive education and had all of 52 students from third grade to eighth grade. I went there when I was eight, left there when I was 13. And uh, then I went to Avon Old Farms where I, I got a scholarship for Another crazy reason. The old lady who played the bills for the school, all she got from the headmaster were formal reports. But I ran a little mimeographed newspaper. I thought it was a way to make a few nickels, but I had practically no allowance. I tried shining shoes, but it was slow going at a nickel a pair. But I found they had a mimeograph machine I could use. So I gathered the news, I typed it up the stencil, and uh, turned the crank of the machine and sold the copies for a nickel. Uh, but after four months, I wanted to give it up. It was a lot of work. And the headmaster says, no, uh, Mrs. Riddle, she's a woman who paid the bills, uh, likes it. I think you should continue it. I didn't know. She gave me a full scholarship to an otherwise very expensive school. <laughs> because of that little mimeograph news. What was, uh, what was in the newsletter? Oh, uh, some joke. Uh, maple syrup time comes and there's the head of the science uh, department carrying buckets. Look at the fool run. Look at, look at, uh, no, look at the sap run. <laughs> Were you writing any songs at that point? I wrote poems occasionally. Uh -huh. I had an uncle who was a poet. Did you ever hear the poem, I have a rendezvous with death at some disputed barricade when the spring comes back with rustling shade and apple blossoms fill the air. I have a rendezvous with death when the spring brings back blue days and fair. It, it, that's just part of it. Uh, but it was a, one of the most famous poems of World War I. My uncle had uh, gone over there to Paris to mingle on the left bank with other uh, poets and the Germans invade and he didn't waste a week. He went, walked down the street and joined the French Foreign Legion. My father, who was a socialist at the time, said, Alan, you're a damn fool. The, don't you know the class of people that run France are not much different than the class of people who run Germany? You should have stayed out of it. I don't expect to see you again, and he didn't. Hmm. My uncle was mowed down by a German machine gun after a couple of But uh, this poem, he, he uh, sent uh, weekly uh, letters to the New Republic magazine, and one of the weekly letters was this poem. <laughs> it was widely reprinted. One of President Kennedy's favorite poems. Kennedy uh, also liked Robert Frost, I believe. Well, Frost got out of line I've quoted many times. Uh, somebody asked him, what is poetry, Mr. Frost? 
Poetry is what gets lost in the translation. Thank you.